our equipment has on standard a large camera viewing field, as you can see on this picture, which is much larger than what you have on the Goldman or on the NA competitor like uh, the Humphrey. The advantage of a large viewing field, first, it allows more head movement from the patient. It allows you to monitor both eyes when you do binocular exams. And also, a small advantage, you can eventually check if the occluder of the opposite eye is well positioned. The camera is not only a wide field camera, but it's also with a higher resolution. The advantage of high resolution is that it allows you to monitor more accurately the fixation. Looking at this image, you see the pupil, and also you see this little bright spot, which is a corneal reflection. You can estimate with some accuracy the orientation of gaze by measuring the distance between these two items. So if you look on the video on the right side here, you see two situations. The first situation, you just move your eyes, you rotate your eyes, and you see there is a displacement of the corneal reflex relative to the pupil. And now you have a movement of the head, and you see both images are moving at the same time. So that's the technique that is currently used to separate head movements from eye movement rotation. And to give you some rough idea, if you make 10 degrees of eye rotation, that corresponds to a movement of the pupil of less than two millimeter. 10 degrees is a lot, and two millimeter is not much. So an eye tracker, which is only monitoring the pupil position, is not able to detect movement of the eye less than 10 degrees. Whereas with this eye tracker, with what makes the difference between the corneal reflex and the pupil, we are able to detect movement less than one degree. And that is a very important feature to monitor the stability of fixation. On the video interface, you have three different functions. The first button on the top allows you to measure the pupil size. The second button allows you to start video recording. And the third button allows you to start eye movement analysis in real time. If you use those two functions, video recording and eye movement analysis, you will get a complete report with your visual field, the video recording on the bottom, and the eye movement recording on the top. You can display the eye movement versus time, but what is most useful for people who want to analyze the result is to use this graph. This is showing the cloud of fixations during the entire exam. So that could be five minutes, two minutes, one minute, whatever. Here you see some quantification of this cloud. You have what's called typically the BCEA. It's uh, something used in uh, microperimetry, which represents the surface area of fixation throughout the entire exam. So typically here we see that during the exam, the fixation has been over an area of 4.4 square degrees. Now, the quantification also gives us the eye deviation. This technique doesn't give you very high accuracy in terms of absolute orientation of gaze. I would say it's about 4 degrees, 5 degrees. It's accurate for relative movement, so to evaluate the stability of fixation, but it will not tell you if the fixation is within 2, 3, or 4 degrees from the fixation dot. Now, it will also indicate the pupil size, average, and fluctuations, and also indicate the frequency of blinks. Now, you can see here four examples. One example with a good fixation in the center with a very stable fixation, 2.9 degrees, slow blink rate, 9%, a pupil size, average of 5 millimeter diameter. Now, this is showing a significant eccentric fixation because it's uh, something like 15 degrees, so we can differentiate 15 degrees of eccentric fixation. We cannot differentiate less than 5 degrees, but 15 degrees for sure we can. And so this is probably because the patient has a central scotoma and is fixating on the side of the scotoma. Here, it's a patient with a lot of fluctuation in the fixation. And on this other graph here, we see a patient with nystagmus. 
Those reports can be included in the final plot out of the visual field. You can choose between the video or the eye movement report. In addition to this, you can plot the eye movement recording, as you can see here on the left, versus time, and see the horizontal and vertical components of the eye movement.